Jadi Good morning church. It's great to be here. Please be seated. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'd like to appreciate my pastors, Pastor Godwin and Shemwen Wubame for this amazing opportunity to share a few thoughts with the people of God. But before I continue, it's Father's Day. So I think it'll be a nice time to celebrate the fathers. Can you celebrate someone by your side who is a father? Let the women rise and please celebrate the handsome men, the diligent men that God has blessed us with. They are fathering us well. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. So, we'll be talking service recovery strategies this morning. But before I continue, it will be nice to say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you because your word will come expressly. Thank you because in the areas where this word needs to impact our businesses and our lives, our eyes of illumination will be enlightened unto it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you will equip me. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. So we're talking service recovery strategies. I might need to move a little bit so that you can see the slides well. And um, I'll start by saying that for every business, for every enterprise, for every organization, this is the bane of their growth. Without not having service recovery strategies, then your organization, your business, be it a small shop, be it an SME, be it a global brand, will collapse if you do not have service recovery strategies. Because like I always say, no matter how perfect your systems are, no matter how exceptional your structure is, no matter how profound your team is, service breakdowns must happen. If you've been in business for a while, especially in this side of the world, you will know that you cannot have any interaction or run a business in Nigeria as a case study, and you won't have service breakdowns. They shouldn't be often, but they most likely will happen because there are a lot of factors that surround that. I'll be coming to that. Next slide. Customer service is only authentic if it elicits an emotional response and it is memorable. For every time you offer a service or you sell a product, in the process of selling a product, you are most likely offering a service. That's why those who are smart have come to realize that the best products only sell with excellent service. People have moved on. The choices are innumerable. If you have a product today and you say you are an innovator, you just started a, a, a product or you just made a product, you manufactured it, I can assure you with three months in business, there are people who have funds waiting to replicate what you're doing. And most likely, they might even scale up and do it bigger and better than you. But the only thing that can keep you continuously in business, whether as a small, like I always like to start from there. Because when we talk in services like this, or when we have to talk to people, a lot of times we don't relate those things to ourselves. We relate it to the person that has a company with 500 workers, 100 workers. But you run your own business as a sole proprietor. You are the only giver of service and sometimes you're like there's nothing they're talking about that concerns me i know me i'm nice customer service is not nice you have to be able to elicit a positive emotional response 
And that response can either be negative or it can be positive. You can see the faces there. They are all faces of people who have interacted with your business. And at some point in time, where you felt you were giving exceptional service, people walked away looking like that. I don't think there's any particular smiley there that looks really good. But in your own impression, because you, are, you don't have staff, you feel, oh, I've perfected the act. It's not even about training my team. I've trained myself. The ability to ex exhibit and elicit a positive, not a negative. Because, they are, of course, with every encounter in customer service, there must be an emotional connection. People only buy what they're emotionally connected to. You buy a dress because it makes you feel a certain way. You eat some certain kind of food or you go to a certain place because it makes you feel a certain way. There are times when you have food in your house, but you want to go to, I don't want to name any of the fancy restaurants and give them free adverts. Just because it makes you feel a certain way. You want to sit down there, you want people to tell you, oh, you're welcome, sir, what do you want? And so many other things are the reason why you go there, because you want to elicit a certain feeling. So, it's only authentic if it gives a positive emotional response. Now, every business exists to serve people. So, no matter your product or service, I think I've said that already, you have to satisfy customers on a consistent basis. If your service level drops, maybe because you have com competition, who renders your excellent service useless? Because now what they are bringing to the table, you can't meet up to. It's not that you're not doing well. But your next door neighbor opens a shop, equips it with state-of-the-art equipment, has a pretty lady in the front desk who says, welcome, ma'am. Like I always share my story of how I changed my, my saloon in Lagos or my hairdresser in Lagos just because my, my hairdresser traveled. And I had to walk into a shop that I'd been seeing for so long and I never paid any cognizance to them because I was in love with my hairdresser. She liked to just. I could talk to her about my life and I know it's not going to land on the tabloids. There are certain reasons why we go to certain places. Not because they make the best hair, but that person just likes to listen. And sometimes you even think they give the best advice. And she traveled and I walked into that shop. Beautiful shop. It had been there for two years. I'd never entered it. But when I walked in and the phone there said, you're welcome, ma'am. Would you like to sit down in our waiting room? I said, waiting room, kwa. I don't get you. And... I was almost taken aback. I said, I can't wait to. I'm in a hurry. She said, no, the waiting room is not to keep you waiting. It's just to keep you comfortable. So I said, interesting. So can we go there? When we got there, I sat down. Beautiful room, not a big space. Was looking lovely. And she went ahead to say, can I offer you tea or coffee? At that point in time, I knew I had to start screaming. So I said, sorry, how much do you make here? so that we can go straight to the point before I have to sell my unborn child because I was still in the university then to pay you or I'll need to work here for a while. She started laughing. She said it's not so much tea or coffee. She still didn't tell me how much it was. So I said, okay, I can drink the tea, get up and run away if I find out that it's too expensive for me to pay. So I said, I'd, I'd like some coffee. And she brought it and brought some cookies. Ha. <laughs> My red flag went up again. I said, it's getting expensive to be sitting in this room. Sorry, auntie. At that point, it wasn't, tell me how much. It was not auntie. Auntie, please, how much do you make hair? And you know, she started laughing and said, how much it was? Can I shock you? It was just 1,000 naira difference from my former hairdresser and this hairdresser. So I said, Yes, yes, yes. You can change the TV. I like African magic. 
<laughs> because I knew I could afford it. And it didn't make any sense. Why not change for 1,000 naira if I could afford it? But after I got comfortable, I decided 